A CNN exclusive this morning, the January 6th Select Committee is attempting to preserve phone records of several Republican lawmakers who played a role in the Stop the Steal rally. The committee is also seeking the records of several Trump family members. CNN congressional correspondent Ryan Nobles is on Capitol Hill this morning. Ryan, tell us exactly to our knowledge who was on this list. Yeah, that's right, Jim. And it's important to also point out that the committee had initially decided not to release the names yeah. of these members of Congress that they uh, decided to ask telecom companies to preserve the records of. But CNN was able to obtain this information. And it really uh, reads as a who's who of the most diehard supporters of the former President Donald Trump in the United States Congress. Uh, this list, uh, we're told, could evolve over time, but it includes names like Representative Lauren Boebert of Colorado, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene of of Florida, uh, Jody Heiss of Georgia. Uh, these are all uh, individuals who participated in some way, shape, or form in that Stop the Steal rally that took place on the Ellipse that was the prelude to the insurrection. It was the event that drew so many of those Trump supporters here uh, to Washington, D.C. on that day, and uh, many of them ended up participating in the insurrection. Now, it's not just members of Congress that we're told that the committee is targeting. It also includes members of the Trump family, including the former president himself, uh, his children, Ivanka, Eric, uh, and Don Jr., as well as uh, Don Jr.'s girlfriend and a, a member of the Trump campaign, Kimberly Guilfoyle, and Laura Trump, who is, of course, the wife of Eric Trump. So uh, at this yeah. point, this is just a request to preserve these records, Jim. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to ask for the records of every single one of these individuals, but it gives us a sense of where this investigation yeah. is headed. I mean, one notable detail from all this seems to be that there were Republican members of Congress calling the president, attempting to get him to call the crowd out off, but, but one person notably absent from the list uh, is House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Uh, do we know why? Yeah, that certainly stands out. Uh, McCarthy is considered to be a very important part of this investigation. The, the committee chairman, uh, Benny Thompson, has not ruled out even calling him as a witness. But what mm -hmm. we're told is that this stage of the investigation, it is all focused on the rally itself. McCarthy was not involved in the rally. He didn't speak at the rally. He didn't encourage people to attend. So that's why we suspect that he is not in this initial group of phone records that they are asking to preserve. Now, that doesn't mean that he couldn't be added at some point down the road. Uh, this is an evolving investigation. It could take a long time. Uh, so McCarthy could be included at some point, but at this stage of the investigation, he is not part of this initial list. Jim. Ryan Nobles, good reporting. Thanks very much. Joining me now to discuss legal implications, etc. CNN legal, legal analyst Ellie Honig. Ellie, good to have you on. I mean, first question here is access, right? Because this is a demand to the phone companies, private companies, as opposed to the individuals, the lawmakers. Do the companies legally have to comply? They do, Jim. Yeah. So mm -hmm. just so we're clear here, the type of information that lawmakers are looking at are what we call toll records, meaning yeah. you won't get the content of the conversations here, but you will get crucial information about who called who, when exactly to the minute and how long those conversations took. That's really important to investigators because it'll help you connect the dots in those key days and hours leading up to and during the rally and then the January 6th riot. So the phone companies have really no dog in this fight. They're going to turn those records over unless some Somebody from the outside steps in and tries to stop it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point because this is metadata. It's not content. It's not like it's transcripts of the calls. That can't happen uh, d domestically. But it does give you the opportunity to then ask these lawmakers questions uh, in sworn testimony. Say, okay, you talked at this point when this was happening elsewhere. Question, of course, is do they, those lawmakers, if they are summoned, subpoena, do they have to comply? Because we saw in the Trump administration so many subpoenas either fought, delayed, or, or ignored. Yeah, that's going to be a really interesting question. What happens if the committee subpoenas sort of its own, right? If they yeah. su subpoena Jim Jordan or Lauren Boeber or even Kevin McCarthy, are they going to fight back against it? Legally, I don't see a basis to do that. There's no executive privilege here. We're talking about Congress, right? So there's no way they can call on that to try to get out of that. Even conversations that may have happened between, let's say, Kevin McCarthy and the White House, that's not going to be subject to executive privilege because it's outside the executive branch. It's legislative branch involved. All they really can do to avoid testifying, maybe there's political ways out of it to leverage political muscle, but they can take the fifth. Anyone can take yeah. the fifth if they think they may have criminal liability. They're entitled to do that, but it sure does look terrible.
Okay, you're a prosecutor. Uh, you can look at this like a prosecutor, perhaps get a sense of what the focus is here. Given that the focus of this initial request are people who were involved in that Stop the Steal rally, as opposed to others who were not or, or came in later in the conversation, like a Kevin McCarthy, what does that tell you about the direction the investigation is taking? Yeah, I think this is all connected, and I think you want to look at the totality here. But the focus on the rally tells me they want to know, what were the expectations for this rally? What were people in the White House saying was going mm. to happen at this rally? What were they planning? How large did they think it was? Did they play with the timing for yep. any reason to perhaps coincide with the counting of the electoral votes? I think those are the kind of questions that the investigators are looking at from a sort of prosecutorial standpoint. Understood. Ellie Honig, always good to have you on. Thank you.